January 20th, 2017 was a significant day in terms of motorsport coverage. Two-time Le Mans class winner and racing veteran Danny Watts revealed to Autosport that he was gay. Most likely the highest profile case of a driver coming out in public like this to date. For one, I'm glad the response to this news has largely been positive and supportive of Danny, but it's also a situation that got me thinking about the bigger picture and the environment the motorsport itself is in. I've got a fair few people sending me tweets along the lines of, this shouldn't be news and I don't care if he's gay. And while I think those statements are made with the best of intentions, I also think it ignores an important question. What does it say about the state of our industry as a whole if someone has to retire from racing before they're comfortable about being open with their sexuality? Don't get me wrong, on a basic level I completely agree that this shouldn't be news. In a perfect world, the sexual preference of a racing driver shouldn't be a factor. Sadly, our world is anything but that, and I suspect the very image of motorsport itself is a huge part of the problem. Let's think about it. Motorsport has had no problem beating its own chest with masculinity as far as I can go back. Men being manly men, driving race cars at 200 miles an hour, having bollocks like grapefruits and being mavericks who smoked, drank and fucked like James Hunt. All drivers presenting ruthless, rugged ideals like Ayrton Senna or Michael Schumacher. We love dudes like that, and we as fans largely embraced them, and this has been a thing since the 1970s. Formula 1 is still a series that insists their sport is best promoted with a fleet of women, many with their cleavage on full display, where women are often sexualized and objectified to make money. MotoGP is incredibly guilty on this front. Or they're stuck on podiums and flaunted like they're a prize to be won. Win a race, get the girl! Motorsport is hyper-masculinity personified and shown off to the world in countries where you're often persecuted for your sexual preference, like Singapore, or waited until the 21st century to give women the right to vote, like Bahrain. That's harmful and off-putting not only to women, but to those in the LGBT community. Danny himself said he felt like he had to hide his sexual preference because of how masculine the sport presented itself. Ignore the occupation for a second. How would you feel if you couldn't be comfortable in your own skin in any environment in life? Imagine being in a world where you had to lead a double life, hiding your true nature because you're afraid of how you'll be perceived. That's how Danny felt, and if anyone truly felt that way, maybe the sport itself has an image problem. Especially when so many fans want to beat their heterosexual chests because they're a part of the majority, it doesn't affect them, and hence their ignorance to the idea of change. F1 media is a landscape where we write about Hamilton's bulldog Roscoe having his sperm frozen, and then a space where our leading national broadcaster pretended that two drivers hated each other for three years to flog their terrible premium channel. And you really want to type to me that a driver coming out isn't relevant because you can't relate to it? We need to do better. We especially need to do better than idiot journalists like Joe Sayward, who wants to exploit stories about Danny's bravery and make it about him because it won't make him a better writer, and then have the ignorance to call out other writers for publishing the stories in the first place. And then he has the sheer audacity to call F1 a very accepted meritocracy. I'm sorry, but you are delusional if you think that the sport is based on merit. From even a basic economical level, you need thousands to even start climbing the ladder, and then millions to ever have a chance in Formula 1 because a division has an audience that has made the term pay driver its most common objective because they feel like whoever writes the biggest check gets it. Motorsport in general has only ever had a handful of successful people of colour ever be involved, and even less from the working class. And even when Anthony Hamilton was working three jobs to keep his son's dream alive, he got picked up by one of the biggest names in the business to help fund his dream. Meritocracy? Ha! I'm glad people rightly called Sayward out for his bullshit. Formula 1 can be a brilliant sport, but it remains in a toxic environment, and we need to be more open about it in order to have any chance of true progression as the next generation of fans become exposed to it. How we react and deal with the ever-changing world around us could set the tone for how our sport is judged on a global level. We have a long way to go, but we have to start somewhere. Danny Watts wasn't the first. He won't be the last. But I hope his courageous decision opens the discussion for further progress. Let's not ever stop being complacent when it comes to equality in motorsport.